Come and follow me. See how God loves you. Go into the world and tell the good news. Come and follow me. See how God loves you. Go into the world and tell the good news. Jesus called twelve apostles to come and follow him. He taught them to love the Father and turn away from sin. Come and follow me. See how God loves you. Go into the world and tell the good news. Welcome to the Children's Liturgy for the third Sunday in Easter. Today is First Holy Communion Day in our parish of St. Francis of Assisi. And I want to pray for all those 17 children who will be making their First Communion today. I pray that they will always stay close to Jesus through this beautiful sacrament. And I also pray that they will pray for us and the blessings they receive today will bless all of us in this parish with this beautiful sacrament. Lord Jesus, today during this Mass, you will feed your people with the words of Scripture and with your own body and blood. Everyone who is here today has answered your invitation to come and eat. Thank you, Lord, for inviting us to this sacred meal in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's light our candle and get ready for our first reading. ever felt so happy that nothing could ruin your happiness? Well, that was how happy the apostles felt after Jesus rose from the dead. Listen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The high priest said to the apostles, we told you plainly not to teach in the name of Jesus, but look what you have done. You have been teaching all over Jerusalem, and you're trying to blame us for his death. Peter and his apostles replied, We don't obey people. We obey God. You killed Jesus by nailing him to a cross. But the God our ancestors worshipped raised him to life and made him our leader and savior. Then God gave him a place at his right side so that the people of Israel would turn back to him and be forgiven. We are here to tell you about all this. And so is the Holy Spirit, who is God's gift to everyone who obeys God. They had the apostles beaten with a whip and warned them not to speak in the name of Jesus. Then they let them go. The apostles left the council and were happy because God had considered them worthy to suffer for the sake of Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm today is, I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I will praise you, Lord. You saved me from the grave. I prayed to you, Lord God, and you healed me. Your faithful people, Lord, will praise you with songs 
and honor your holy name. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Have pity, Lord, help. You have turned my sorrow into joyful dancing. I will never stop singing your praises, my Lord and my God. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Lord Jesus, make your word plain to us. Make our hearts burn with love when you speak. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. In today's gospel, Jesus appears to seven disciples after he has risen from the dead. And guess what? He cooks breakfast for them. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Gospel of John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus later appeared to his disciples along the shore of Lake Tiberias. Simon Peter, Thomas the twin, Nathaniel from Canaan in Galilee, and the two sons of Zebedee were there. Together with two other disciples, Simon Peter said, I'm going fishing. The other said, we'll go with you. They went out in their boat, but they didn't catch a thing that night. Early the next morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize who he was. Jesus shouted, friends, have you caught anything? No, they answered. So he told them, let your net down on the right side of your boat and you will catch some fish. They did, and the net was so full of fish that they could not drag it up into the boat. Jesus' favorite disciple told Peter, it's the Lord. When Simon heard that it was the Lord, he put on the clothes he had taken off while he was working and jumped into the water. The boat was only about a hundred yards from shore. So the other disciples stayed in the boat and dragged in the net full of fish. When the disciples got out of the boat, they saw some bread and some charcoal and a charcoal fire with fish on it. Jesus told his disciples, Bring some of the fish you caught. Simon Peter got back into the boat and dragged the net to the shore. In it were about 153 large fish, but still the net did not rip. Jesus said, come and eat. But none of the disciples dared ask who he was. They knew he was the Lord. Jesus took the bread in his hands and gave some of it to his disciples. He did the same with the fish. This was the third time that Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia. I love this story. Part of it is because when I was a little girl, I used to go swimming in Lake Erie off of a, a beach that was covered with pebbles and little stones. And if you went pretty, not too far out, but if you got away from the shore a little bit, got pretty deep. And I could imagine that a boat could come in there and try to catch fish. 
And so when I hear that the apostles are in a boat and they look up on the shore and they see somebody up there with a little charcoal fire, it brings back my childhood. I can I can see a little fire that we used to build on the beach and sometimes we wrote would roast hot dogs or marshmallows on that little fire. But this is early morning and so it's not my mom up there roasting hot dogs and marshmallows. It's Jesus and he's he's grilling some fish and he's warming some bread. And when the apostles who've been out in that boat all night didn't catch any fish, here's Jesus up on the shore. He says, did you catch anything? No. We'll put your net over the side. On the right side, you'll catch some fish. They could have said, what, are you not sweeping in this boat all night? We haven't caught any fish. How can you up on the shore tell us? But they kind of thought, oh, that's probably the Lord. And they put their net over the side, and sure enough, they caught 153 large fish in a net. They could hardly get it up into the boat. And the, the apostle, they say, that was probably Jesus' favorite, we think it's John. He was the youngest one. He says to Peter, it's the Lord. So Peter jumps over the side of the boat and swims up to the shore, and sure enough, there's Jesus. He's got a little fire going. He's got a little grill over it grilling some fish, toasting some bread. The others come up and they have breakfast together. Don't you love that? He didn't bring some fancy feast down with grapes and apples and pears and dates and all this. Fan no, just simple. Bread and fish. Did you ever have a fish sandwich for breakfast? The people who lived along the lake there in Galilee, they often had fish. Think of the story of the five loaves and two fish that that little boy brought that Jesus changed into feed 5,000. He had fish, dried fish and bread in his little knapsack. That's what people ate in those days, especially if you lived near the lake, you dried the fish. So he. Jesus chose things that are so common, so ordinary. People didn't have to feel like this was some special thing that you had to get so that you could eat with Jesus. No, just bread. I bet you have some kind of bread every morning for breakfast. Toast, pancakes, egg McMuffin. Sure, even cereal. Use the same materials, the same ingredients that you use to make bread for cereal. And, and just imagine what life would be like without bread. I mean, even people who can't eat gluten can get bread that's made in a special way so they can eat it. And almost everything we eat, sandwiches, hamburgers, hot dogs, pizza, all those things have bread because Jesus knew we would almost always have bread in some form so that we could eat the bread of life to feed our bodies. And Jesus is the bread of life for our souls. So on this first communion Sunday here in our parish and any other parish that's celebrating first communion, and for all of you children who've already received your First Communion, and those of you who are waiting to receive it, let's remember that Jesus gave his body and blood to us so that we could always have breakfast with him, or lunch, or dinner, have a meal with the Lord, and feed our souls with the body of the one who loves us so much. All right, let's stand and have our profession of faith. I would like you to say, yes, I do believe to each question. Do you believe that God, the loving creator, made us and sent Jesus to save us? Yes, I do believe. Do you believe that Jesus suffered, died, rose from the dead, and returned to heaven so that we could go to heaven too? 
Yes, I do believe. Do you believe that the Holy Spirit comes upon the gifts of bread and wine at every celebration of the Mass so that they become for us the body and blood of Christ? Yes, I do believe. Yes, we believe that God feeds us body and soul at every Mass. Knowing that God wants all people to have what they need to live good lives, let us pray. Our response to each petition will be, stay with us, Lord. Through the love shown us by the Holy Father and all bishops, priests, and leaders of the church, stay with us, Lord. Stay with us, Lord. Through the kindness we show to one another, stay with us, Lord. Stay with us, Lord. Through the love you show us in the sacrament of the Eucharist, stay with us, Lord. Stay with us, Lord. And now, children, if there's any one person or anything that you would like to pray for, do it now. We pray, stay with us, Lord. Stay with us, Lord. Lord, when we eat the Eucharistic food you gave us and listen to your holy words, we grow strong in our faith. We thank you for feeding us mind, body, and spirit. And we ask that you stay with us always that one day we might be together with you in heaven. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. May you feel the presence of the Lord with you all week. They saw him forgive, heal the sick and teach the crowds. Go and witness, he told them, I send you now to go baptize. Come and follow me, see how God loves you. Go into the world and tell the good news. At his death and resurrection, the disciples were amazed. But the courage to proclaim Him happened when the Holy Spirit came. Come and follow me, see how God loves you. Go into the world and tell the good news. We are now His disciples called to witness everywhere, Jesus Christ is our savior in his name we love and care come and follow me see how god loves you go into the world and tell the good news go into the world and tell the good news